All right. Hello and welcome to Experian's Weekly Credit Chat, which we host every single Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. My name is Christina Roman and I'm the Social Media Specialist for Experian North America. Today I'm really excited because as you can see to my right, we have Rod Griffin who's in the office with me. Normally he is uh, tuning in from our offices in Texas, but today he is at the Costa Mesa office, so I'm really excited to have him live and in person in this video. I'm also excited to be joined by Neil Stern. Neil Stern is a CPA and member of AICPA's Financial Literacy Commission. Thank you so much for joining us, Neil. My pleasure. So I'm really excited because each week we cover a different personal finance topic. And this week we're covering ways to reduce stress and anxiety this holiday season. You know, holidays can be a time for great fun with family and friends, but it can also be a really anxious time when it comes to spending money, you know, carrying extra debt maybe around the holidays. So we're going to share some helpful tips to help you combat that. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So one of the first questions that we're tweeting out, uh, whoops, sorry. Uh, one of the first questions that we're tweeting out is, um, Emily, where is the question? I'm sorry, guys. Um, so what are some common signs that the holidays are causing you stress? So Neil, you can go ahead and get that started. Oh, sure. Well, one would be a feeling that you just can't prioritize. You think about all the cards you want to send out, who you want to visit, what get-togethers you want to organize, what gifts to buy, and you just don't know where to start. And uh, then you think of this feeling where the faster you go, the behinder you get. You, you try and think of all the things you're supposed to do as the holiday draws closer, but the clock moves more quickly than you can. And when you keep hearing the countdown about how many days until Christmas, that probably adds some fuel to the fire and adds to the stress level. And uh, then on the money side, you might find yourself engaging in what I would call maybe brute force shopping. You're too overwhelmed to make a plan for what you want to get, what you can afford to spend. And so you wind up just buying haphazardly and you're more driven by what you see in the store than what actually makes sense for your situation. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. One of the tips that we actually shared out is not procrastinating store that's when you start to just pick whatever's around you right because you're just trying to get everything done because maybe it's the night before christmas and i know i've definitely been there where it's the night before christmas and you remember oh my gosh i never made a list and i totally forgot about this person and now i've got to figure out what to get them mm -hmm. so what that's about you rod what are what are some oh, of the things that the key issue for me procrastination i still have my family knows this. I'm, I do a Christmas video every year, and I still haven't finished it. So it has to be done this weekend. So um, it's almost done. <laughs> so it, it's, uh, you know, so there's always, you know, that kind of stress. And failing to plan it, Neil's exactly right. It's really, you know, being overwhelmed with everything that goes on in life um, and then not being able to plan, not being able to budget, not being able to, you know, to, to prepare yeah, and, I, and I, I think the other thing, too, and somebody made a great point, property taxes, end of year, you know, so it's not just the fact that you have all these things that you have to buy this year, but it's everything in addition to the bills that you're already paying, you know, each month. So it's all of that compiled together that can create a lot of stress. Well, yeah, and I think that's a good point. January creates as much holiday stress as the holidays themselves, because we're talking about that, you know, we have... Ta car taxes due and you know, the tags and all that too. So everything comes due at the first of the year. And so you're already you know, stressed going into that month. So yeah, absolutely true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. January is the cause of holiday stress. That's, the, it's the, <laughs> that's it's like when everything hits you, right? Yeah, that's when all the bills come. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So what are some mistakes to avoid if you feel financially stressed by the holidays? Well, you know, bypass you know, bypassing the step of, of working with a budget or having a spending plan uh, is a place that you can really uh, get your stress level up. If you've got to the point where you feel so financially stressed that you're just not up to thinking about what you can afford, it's easy to compound your stress by racking up bills uh, that go to that January thing. They're going to be the gift that keeps on giving in the new year in the way that you least wanted to. Uh, walking into a store or a mall without a list or a plan 
And that's a real good way to fall into the trap of buying things that are going to bust your budget and might not even be right for the people that you're going to give them to. And then there's something that we call retail therapy. People sometimes try to deal with stress that way by using shopping uh, to kind of work off their stress. And the problem with that is it might take your mind off the stress for just a short amount of time, but pretty soon you're likely to feel even more stressed when you realize that you've overspent and maybe filled up the closet with some things that you really don't need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really good point. You know, one for you, one for me kind of a deal, yeah. you know, just to make yourself feel a little bit better. I think yeah. also, you know, letting go of those healthy habits that maybe you have throughout the year during this time of year, you're like, forget it, I'm so stressed out, I'm gonna eat whatever I want, I'm not gonna stick to my routines. And, and that can cause you to be even more stressed out because those are just natural stress relievers. Uh-oh, Rod's laughing. No, I'm just saying, <laughs> oh, I missed that part about eating whatever I want. I, that's where I go wrong. Okay, <laughs> all the time. Uh, so, yeah, that's a, I need to work on that. That needs to be a New Year's resolution, which also creates stress, but that's a post-holiday conversation. Yeah. yeah, and I think also, you know, um, that pressure to just buy it even though you can't afford it like yeah. you buy it just because right now it'll make somebody happy but then later on you're stuck putting that bill and figuring out how it is that you're going to pay it off and i think you know neil's right on point we say it all the time in our field you have to budget if you don't like calling it a budget call it a spending plan still a budget but you need a budget um i was at the the uh, baggage claim at the airport couple of days ago and I was it just it was one of those funny things there was a lady talking on her cell phone to someone else and she she told the person on the other end of the line like if you have to think about buying the watch and it was a clear it was some sort of expensive watch apparently so if you have to think about it you can't afford it and conversation went on a minute later and she said but she said you're not rich mm. rich people don't think about what they buy if you have to think about it you can't afford it and went, well Actually, it's the other way around. Rich people think about what they buy all the time. That's why they are rich. They they are careful about how they spend their money. They budget. Yeah. And they plan. And um, you know, so kind of like it's a good tip, but the wrong angle. <laughs> it was kind of funny to listen to that conversation. But I do like it. Just sound like somebody at least is opening up about this conversation about whether they can or can't afford a watch. Yeah. So it sounds like somebody on the other end is at least asking for some advice. And it sounds like, you know, aside from that one part of it, it was good advice good that advice, they were getting. Yeah. Yeah. Think about what you're about to buy mm -hmm. and, and whether or not you can really afford it. Mm -hmm. So it was right advice. Yeah. Wrong perspective, right advice. Yeah. yeah. And like my dad, he was creating a list. Um, I was at his house and he was creating a list. And um, he's like, this is probably expensive, but I'm just gonna put it on there. And then I looked and I was like, I would love to be able to buy him a, a nice watch um, for the holidays, but it's probably not in my budget, but it's something that I can think about maybe for his birthday or something, you know, having found out just a couple weeks before Christmas. Getting into an arms race about how expensive your presents are gonna be is probably a pretty good way to rack up a lot of bills too. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So what are some simple steps that you can take if you're feeling overwhelmed by the holiday season? Well, I would start by uh, taking back control over what seems like an overwhelming situation. For example, start out with a list of what you have to get done and try and put things into a priority order. Some things have a longer fuse than others. For example, if you're buying some things online, there's probably a lead time for a delivery. If you're sending things out, there's some lead time associated with that. And so you wanna try and time the things that have a longer fuse to come earlier on your uh, calendar. Uh, when you take a deep breath and just get things onto a list, it gives you a chance to think about what you're gonna get done and in what order. Uh, I guess you, just to repeat this perhaps, but if you don't already have a budget or a spending plan, take a step back and think about what makes sense for your situation, especially when you're facing the spending that comes along with the holiday. And the first step is to get a handle on what you can afford overall, and then how much of that's gonna be for gifts, get-togethers, and 
travel if that's part of your plan because people don't always think of those things together they think i'm going to go buy some gifts oh yeah but then we're taking this trip also and no of course i want to get together with my friends we're going to have some drinks and we're going to eat whatever we want like we were saying before but it all adds up and it's all coming out of one place and so you you're wise to just sort of think of all those things together and how much do you have to cover it all so you can try to prioritize and then I would say, try doing some things that just aren't part of that holiday vortex. You know, you have an exercise routine that hopefully you try to stick to during the year. And having it just come to a stop when the holidays are is probably not a great idea. As a matter of fact, you, you might even reason that this is when you need it the most to counteract all those fruit cakes and eggnog and stuff like that. So just try and work in some non-holiday things to keep your energy level high and things that are good for you uh, as part of the mix. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Those are all great tips. And just to sort of turn it on its head too, sometimes it's about checking stuff off the list. Mm -hmm. You think about when you're prioritizing, do you really need to do some things, you know, if you're planning a holiday party, how complex do you need to make it? How much effort do you need to put into it? Do you, are there things you don't really have to do to have your friends or family at your home with you? You know, are, are there things that you can take off the list that, that could be prioritized away rather than added in too? Because that can help reduce. We try to do too much. Yeah. Often. Sometimes it's yeah. about asking for help. You know, too, you don't have to take everything on yourself. And some things deserve to be sunset. The fact that you did something last year and the year before doesn't necessarily mean it has to be a permanent thing. Some things are wonderful traditions, and other things are things that they're good some of the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, those are all really, really great points. So definitely making those lists, making that budget. Make sure that your budget fits within your overall budget, your holiday budget has to fit within your overall budget. Um, making sure that you're prioritizing, you know, those things that make you feel healthy, you know, step away from all of the hustle and bustle and get in your workouts. If that makes you feel good, get your walks in, get sleep, you know, all of these things will help you to feel better and less overwhelmed. Um, okay, so what about creating realistic expectations for family members and friends? How can we go about doing that? Uh, it's like any other money decision that affects your family's financial well-being. It, it makes sense to have a talk in advance with your spouse, your partner, about what you can afford. And that'll help you uh, steer clear of spending that'll break the bank. But it's got another benefit, too. We were talking a, a few moments ago about that arms race with, you know, somebody's going to get a more expensive watch than the next person, which you can avoid by just having a good talk about this, is that lopsided situation where one person bought that $300 item and then the other one bought something that's $75, perhaps a little more affordable. And it just kind of comes out in the wrong place because it, it just doesn't doesn't line up and doesn't make sense at least on on one side or the other so that's a benefit to talking about it in advance besides the obvious one of keeping within your budget uh, a lot of families have two branches of relatives that are going to be on the gift list and this is a place where some tension and conflict can arise how much are we going to spend on your family? How much are we going to spend on my family? And the time to be talking about, about that probably isn't when you're online at the store or when you have things that are ready to go into a cart. If you just can take a little time, take a step back, talk about that before, uh, you can be fair to everyone and not sort of have this, you know, source of tension. Your family got X and my family only got Y. Uh, with your kids, uh, one thing to think about is the idea of one primary present and then some stocking stuffers. There are going to be some things that, you know, your kids really want. Uh, somebody might want an iPad. Somebody, you know, might want, uh, you know, some artificial in, uh, reality glasses or, or what have you. Some of these things can, can run kind of high. And the idea of picking which one you really want and then some other things that are stocking stuffers to round it out might make more sense and perhaps uh, reduce the chances for disappointment despite all your good intentions. And then uh, let's say there's a special holiday trip that's part of your plans. It's good for everybody in the family to think about as that as part of the gift giving. That might be actually more expensive than some of the things that you're going to stick in your cart in the store. Uh, and if this is well understood, 
you can reduce what we call in the accounting world that expectation gap where, you know, yeah, this is the year we're, we're taking that big trip. It isn't also going to be the year where we're buying that, you know, really expensive new computer or really expensive new audio system. Maybe next year when we're not making such a big trip might be a better year to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, really good tips. Thank you so much, Neil. Rod, how do you uh, manage it with your family? I talk to my wife. Um, <laughs> so, and I'll say this: we, you know, we we start talking about the holidays after the holidays end. I mean, so it's a, a year long conversation. We set specific budgets, just exactly what Neil was talking about. Um, you know, we set expectations with our kids and our grandkids. They know. Um, roughly what we will spend or what we tell them we're going to spend and then we pad that a bit but um you know they so there's a fairness expectation um you know so they know kind of what um where they fall we ask for a list early uh, and they know if we don't get the list santa doesn't get the list or i don't get the list santa may not get the list we got to make sure you get you know the, li the list needs to be developed <laughs> we need to know what's on it so then we can decide what fits the budget, what doesn't, how do we, you know, approach that. Um, but a lot of it's expectation setting, too. Mm -hmm. You know, it's and everybody you know knows where they fall. Um, and we start shopping. And my wife starts shopping, especially um, because she's much better than I am. Um, sales in January. I mean, it, it's right out of the gate, and we shop year round so that when the holidays come, we don't have a whole long holiday list. That's really smart. Yeah, I love that. Um, I want to go back to also what Neil mentioned about talking about your families and who you're going to buy for and how much you're going to spend on everybody. Because that's one of the things I know my husband and I did this year. Um, so we don't have kids, but my cousins, I, they're like my brothers and sisters, and they all have kids. And like, so it went from being, you know, two kids here, two kids there. So we have four kids. Now there's seven on one side, you know, four on the other, and it's like, okay, now we're buying for 11 kids. That's a lot of presents, so how are we going to make this work? You know, should we do presents for the kids this year? Can we afford to do it? So having that conversation with him helped me to create my budget, but also it put a lot of anxiety in me because I was like, every year we bought for all of the kids, and now this year we're not. And so I'm trying to figure out, you know, am I going to get – questioned about it and that's the kind of stuff that makes me nervous so i would love to hear your tips guys i'm looking for some advice here on how do i navigate that if you feel kind of pressured into buying for your family do you ever think about doing something for the kids as a group rather than trying to buy them all individual things sometimes they may remember that actually more take them all out for you know some kind of a fun thing and uh they get to be with their aunt and uh, that maybe uh, spreads your you know, budget a little more effectively in terms of uh, you know, return on investment, perhaps, you know, how much they enjoy it and remember what you did for them. Yeah, that's a great tip. That's a really great tip. Were you going to ask? Well, no, I, was, you know, I think it, also about talking to the parents. Um, you know, if your nieces, nephews are younger, if, you're, you know, if your cousins are all the same age, then maybe it is. I mean, it could be a great thing to go out and do something together. I mean, we are in Southern, Southern California and Disneyland isn't very far away. So you know, well, that's pricey. everybody pay, well, but everybody pay for, pay their own way and create a memory rather than, um, you know, or share the costs yeah. to do something like that, um, together, you know, and, and that can, and sometimes be a better way to just you know, sort of share those costs and not upset somebody. I always make at least one person mad. I don't know why. <laughs> Uh, somebody I that I mess up with every year, and so I apologize in advance because it will be somebody I don't know who, you know, but I'm good at that. It seems like, yeah, and that's just and that's part of the stress of the holidays for me. I'm always wondering which, who am I going to mess up on this year because it'll be somebody. Yeah, and, and they get over it. We get over it. Then it's fine. You know, get the New Year's. It's all good. Yeah, absolutely. I did do one year where I bought a family gift, so I bought you know, some really cute Christmas movies for the kids or holiday movies. And then I bought at Target that big bo uh, bucket of popcorn that comes with like the candy inside. It's like uh -huh. already packaged. And I, that was their gift. And I think it cost me $20 because the holiday movies were $5 plus the bucket of popcorn. And I thought that was like a nice family gift so they can have time. They can enjoy a movie and a treat at their house and, you know, spend quality time. 
we the other thing we do too is when you reach a certain age there may be a gift card there may be you know something else but you become an adult to us to and to, to me especially the holidays are about the kids more than anything else um, you know as adults the expectation should change for mm -hmm. us it does for us um, you know then it's about being together it's about the time you, you're spending it's about the memories you make mm -hmm. you know, so we the, the gift giving reduces significantly um, you know and maybe it's about you know, a, you know having a drawing or a, um, not a white elephant but the same you know same kind of thing you, you know you divide and conquer you, know, you don't buy for everybody everybody gets a person or one or two people that you get a gift for instead yeah yeah and I actually love that you brought up the white elephant because I have so many cousins on one side that that's one thing we did everybody decided we'll just bring one gift that way we're not having to buy for everybody and then their kids on top of it so everybody brings one gift and then we have a white elephant and it's a lot of fun because we try to make it really funny gifts so that when you open it everybody gets a good laugh and that is an experience kind of like what Neil mentioned that those are the memorable experiences that you can create together the quality time is probably the most valuable commodity, especially as you get older. Uh, if you go on uh, a family event, you all get together. The pictures or videos that you take from that are probably going to be around a lot longer and looked at a lot more often in the future than whatever it is that you might have bought. Mm -hmm. yep. Absolutely. That's a great point. Gifts tend to become stuff. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's and it happens with me you know and you know what did you get last christmas yeah probably can't remember like mm -hmm. remember but mm -hmm. i can tell you what we did together mm -hmm. you know? and it's you know so it's a whole that's a great thing. Yeah, yeah that's so true how can you plan ahead to make the holidays fit in your budget so what are some simple ways to start doing that well, when you say uh, have the holidays fit within your budget, that's wonderful. And the thing is that a first step is actually have a budget because about uh, <laughs> half the people that go shopping for the holidays don't have a budget according to a recent survey that someone did. Uh, so the rest of the people are winging it and having a budget is a great step in making sure everything's going to fit into your budget. Uh, some people are put off by the idea of living off a budget. Rod mentioned that earlier. Uh, but what you want to do if you think, gee, I can't live off a budget, at the very minimum, at least have some sort of a spending plan. How much of your income has to cover fixed expenses like rent, mortgage, car payments, and how much is left over for everything else? And then think about what the everything else is, including what goes with the holidays. It's your gift giving, it's your travel, it's your parties, your entertainment, your get together. And if you can just think that way, it'll let you put a fence around what you can spend without building up a pile of bills and built-in financial stress as you start the new year. So it's worth the time to make a list in advance, and we spoke about this uh, shortly ago, of who you're going to buy the presents for, what they can actually use, and a rough idea of what you can really spend for each. And if you have a list like that ready before the frenzy of all these sales starts up, you can watch for good deals on the items that, that you actually are targeting or have in mind. Uh, and now we're, we're starting to see these Black Friday sales as early as around Halloween time. So, you know, if you do have an idea, just even somewhat in advance, not everybody's going to be good enough to do it a year in advance. Although there, there certainly are some advantages, uh, as you mentioned before. But if you're not quite that ahead on your calendar but at the very minimum you're back a couple months ago you're going to be able to scoop up some things that are actually on your list and uh, save a couple of dollars in, in doing so and the side benefit of that of course is avoiding that last minute crush because th there just can't be a lot of pleasure to driving around a mall parking lot for 20 minutes looking for a space no and then you're around a lot of people so everything kind of compounds you know and you're just like i just want to get out of here I'm going to buy this, mm -hmm. let's go, you know, and yeah. you're spending money you didn't intend to spend. Mm -hmm. Just to get out, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I know I've seen also online um, some people have created some really awesome um, holiday savings plans that start in January. And so it's like you put this much in your bank account each month or a savings account specifically for the holidays and by the end of the year you'll have one thousand dollars you know it's they have different types of plans to help you start saving more but that's another option as well 
That, that's wonderful. That option actually is a throwback to uh, something that was as far back as the 1950s. Uh, there used to be things called Christmas clubs, and yeah. people would put in, you know, five dollars a week or whatever it was. And at the end of the year, their money for the holiday was there, and they, they didn't have a frenzy with bills and like that. Back in in those days, credit cards were actually very uncommon. And uh, people would try to save up the cash, and maybe some of those old habits uh, are still good ones to have today. Yeah, that's that's awesome. I didn't even know that. Yeah. So where were these Christmas like? Where were Christmas clubs at? Like a bank Banks or credit unions? Yeah. 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 Wow, that's like pretty it. cool. I barely am old enough to remember those. <laughs> uh, I shouldn't admit that I'm more than barely old enough to remember. <laughs> Yeah, I know I remember this. You know, and it's, the other thing is, at a savings kind of any kind, it, it's not like the holidays are an emergency. We know they're coming every year. Mm -hmm. It's not a surprise. Um, you know, so it's not quite the same thing as an emergency fund. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's a holiday fund. And, mm -hmm. you know, you should think about setting it aside. Um, and there are things you can pick up when you have kids, especially. You know, they always laugh because one of the things that every one of my, I, there are nine grandkids in my, on my mom's side. So the nine of us always knew that my grandma was going to get us socks. Yes. <laughs> so we always got socks and she always bought them, you know, it, it, warm socks. We lived in the North, they were warm socks. And we all, by the time we got older, looked forward to our yes. socks every year, you know, and, and, but she would get them on sale at Kmart and the Blue Light Special quite mm -hmm. often, I think, if you remember those. Um, but it doesn't have to be really extravagant things. I mean, it was sort of traditional. We, we knew our socks when mm -hmm. we got the package. We couldn't wait for our socks. Um, fixed income, we didn't have much money, but we didn't care that it wasn't something you know diamond crusted. It was our socks, and yes. that was what we got every year. You know, I have an aunt that did the same thing. It was socks and underwear that she was yeah, this. Yeah. and we would just open the bag and be like, "Oh, there's underwear. Okay, and here are the socks. socks. You know, fuzzy <laughs> socks." But as we got older, that became something that we look forward to, just yeah. like you said. And it's just something simple that she started every year, and we just ended up really enjoying it. Yeah. Socks would be a wonderful present here in New York today. It was uh, 20 <laughs> degrees, morning and zero with the windshield. Oh, oh man. <laughs> yes. Yep. We don't talk, I don't allow, I live in Dallas, and we actually get weather there. So I don't allow the people here in Southern California to talk about weather. <laughs> they don't have weather. It's... It's 75 and sunny. That's like that's the end of the conversation. It's the worst. Right? It's the it's most the boring worst. conversation in the world. Yeah. So. <laughs> that is the only downside to California, I would say. Zero seasons. I know some people love it. I personally am a fan of seasons. Though. I they're going to say boring weather conversations. That's yeah. kind of the only downside. And I'm looking out. I'm kind of, there's this beautiful window on palm trees. Yeah. And no complaints. Come <laughs> visit here in New York and uh, bring those socks that your grandmother gave you. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Um, okay, so let's go on to this next question. How and it kind of ties into what we we're just talking about about the socks. You know, what are some meaningful gifts that you can give that won't break the bank? Well, certainly, if you're into crafts, uh, those gifts uh, can have a real personal touch. Uh, you're saying your grandmother bought the socks, uh, which is wonderful. Some people actually have that skill, actually enjoy knitting, and uh, anything that you can knit would get a lot of use right away if it happens to be the Christmas season here in the Northeast. Uh, but the personal touch that goes with it is probably worth more than, than money that, uh, that a present could be bought for. Uh, some of the gifts that are the most valued, and remember the personal ones that really just don't cost anything. Uh, for example, I remember uh, one year someone gave my parents a collection of family pictures that were put together from various shoe boxes or shopping bags that they were in and so forth. And they were much more excited about this than anything that we could have bought for them. You know, my parents have probably three of everything they could possibly use that you would get in a store. Uh, but something like that truly is priceless. And the thought that goes with it, uh, you know, really means a lot. And that's something that they look at, you know, all, all the time. It's just a, a fabulous present. That's really a gift that keeps on giving because it's, a, it's great memories that are packaged up in something like that. Uh, one of the best gifts anybody ever gave me was a wonderful homemade dinner. We're all so accustomed to, you know, living off of this, like, merciless time clock. Uh, and what there isn't time for is to sit back and do that. There's microwave food. There's takeout. There's reservations. 
but how often is there that? Um, certainly not knocking, going to a restaurant. That's a great thing to do, especially if you have a large group. Uh, but a real home-cooked dinner made from scratch, what a great present that is. And you think about all the thought that went into the menu and so on. And that's something that probably fits into a budget pretty well because the main ingredient there is the skill set and the creativity. Uh, of course, I wouldn't give that for a present since I can barely eat <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure there are plenty of people yeah. out there who have a better skill set than me uh, for that. Yeah. I know uh, when I was a struggling college student, one of the things I would do with my grandma is I would give her a really pretty card. And in the card, I would say, um, you know, I'm going to take you out to dinner and a movie. And so that's something that we would do together so we could have that experience together. What about, been, do you have any? Yeah, I mean, you know, lots of things, similar things. It's more the, you know, the things you do for memories. Um, when I was close to my grandma, but one year um, she had a planter in front of her house and I bought flowers and they grew for years. I mean, I was totally surprised. There were just a few and it filled, they ended up filling the planter. I mean, that was, you know, she would mention that, you know, a lot. You know, when spring came around and the flowers would bloom again. Um, you know, so things like that, that, you know, are just simple. It was just, just a, a few little flowers that you, you, know, you took the time to kind of fix up the planter and, and, and do that work and it lasted for years and years. I mean, it's, you know, it's those kinds of things that, you know, the memories that I have, you know, mm -hmm. times with the families, I remember, you know, my grandpa's last Christmas with us, um, probably the best memories I ever had because we weren't supposed to have been there. You know, he sat in the corner and smiled the whole time. Um, you know, never, never, ever forget that. Um, you know, so it's those memories that are so important more than anything you get. It's the memory that goes with what you get. Yes, you know? absolutely. Um, Alex had mentioned that he's going to do this with his brothers, but his brothers are all in California this year. And so they're getting together and taking a photo for, for their mom because she doesn't have a photo of them, a recent photo of them together. And that's something my brother and I did two years ago for my parents. And I remember um, I found a Groupon, a very cheap Groupon, um, and I went to JCPenney and got my photo taken at JCPenney with my brother. And then we framed it in a really pretty frame that I got at Michael's on a really good sale, like 60% off because of the holidays. And so it was a very inexpensive gift that we ended up putting together for our parents. And my mom cried when she saw it. So that was so worth it. It was so worth having them open that and just be so happy and it hangs in our house you know, it's hung there for two years now. Every time I walk in the door, I see it. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's the simple stuff. Yes. Other things wear out. I mean, <laughs> you know, you get watches, you can get you know, other things, and they, they wear out and go away. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the, the things that will last that are really important and less stress and usually less expensive. Yeah, that's kind of the irony to me. It's the, the things you spend the least on, but put the most thought into. Mm -hmm. Those are the most powerful and most lasting. Yeah. It's not about how much you spend, right? Mm -hmm. What about traditions? What are some traditions you can start with your family and friends that don't involve gift giving? When you remember and talk about past holidays, what comes up is usually what you did and who you did it with. It's almost never about what somebody bought, unless it's an ugly sweater that you're still trying to figure out how to get rid of. <laughs> no. <laughs> Maybe the boy that you bought that caught on fire, you're probably going to remember that. Yeah. <laughs> One, one great tradition is taking part in a community event that helps people who are less well off than you are. For example, uh, some people like to go help serve dinner in a place that you know houses the homeless or a facility for the elderly. And doing that can make you feel pretty good about yourself. Uh, it also helps everybody in the family build some perspective about what they have and what they don't have. Uh, you can start feeling like sorry for yourself because you don't have uh, that pair of Jimmy Choo shoes and someone else does. But when you see some folks that are really down on their luck and you can help them just a little bit, even for that one day, it really gives you a better perspective about what you really do have. Uh, and that's a little present for yourself, maybe, that you get to keep by, by doing that for someone else. Uh, taking a tour of the holiday lights in the neighborhood, that's a once-a-year delight. It doesn't cost anything. 
And even if you've done this before, there's always something new every year, and especially now with all this new technology coming on board. If anybody remembers the movie Christmas Vacation with Chevy Chase, yes, so oh, yeah. lights up on the tree, and you saw the thing at the power plant, you know, like all the meters were going off of their charts and everything like that. You're just going to blow the whole town's power, and you know, you see all the sparks coming up and everything. And now they have these LEDs. And they're like projection things, and you just see lights all over somebody's house without all of that. The, the point being that there's something new to see every year. It's a great tradition. Go take a look and see what you know new things are, are up there. And then there are some free or almost free things around that give you an opportunity to get together with your family. Like one that we see around here sometimes is ice skating in uh, some of the uh, open air shopping centers. Believe it or not, we actually have those here in the Northeast. And uh, they'll actually put a skating rink in, in the middle. And uh, it, it's a great uh, opportunity to you know, have a, a nice family uh, outing. Uh, you don't need to be ready for the Olympics to go do this. You're going to find a lot of people that kind of like me that hang on to the side and make sure they don't hit anybody else. Uh, but it's uh, certainly a, a good uh, tradition to just let's go out there and do something that we can only do this time of year and that we can do together. Yeah, I know my family would get a good laugh if they ever saw me on ice skates, that's for sure. <laughs> I would make it into the that's memory true. book. <laughs> I thought you hung on to the side so you didn't fall down. I was never worried about running into anybody else. You know? <laughs> I think they're still talking about me in Shawnee Mountain in Pennsylvania, and that was a long time ago. <laughs> we have, I think, and the, we we do the Christmas lights. Uh, you know, we and we've packed up cars and family in other parts of the country, and and uh, anywhere in Kansas City, I can remember packing up everybody in the car, and that in itself can be an adventure, and then. I mean, sometimes having two cars and trying to follow, um, you know, keep track and what happened there. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, in holiday in the park kinds of events, um, you know, we, we have new neighbors who now have the entire cast of the Star Wars dark side mm -hmm. uh, with music. <laughs> and then neighbors on the other side who have, you know, the, the, the you know, the Luke Skywalker Millennium Falcon. And, they're, and I'm caught in the middle with the traditional Christmas. Yeah. So I don't know exactly what's going on in our neighborhood right now. But you it's a lot the of memo fun. About Star Wars, yeah, and so I'm like, now wait a minute. Santa Claus is now refereeing an, an intergalactic <laughs> war. I don't know what's going on, but it's yeah. So, but it's uh, you know, and so it's a lot of fun, you know, and memories with our neighbors too. So, and the little ones are are really, to me, that's what's cool. So the the little ones across, you know, they have, they have little kids, and our neighbors have a teenager, and we have kids, and so it's you know grandkids. So it's really. You know, that's a, a lot of fun because I know that's going to be a, a long memory about how in the world did Star Wars erupt on our block. But, you know, that's, I'm sure a lot of it has to do with any movie that's coming out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it does. Um, one of the things that we do in my family and it just started last year was um, we started a minute to win at game night. So mm -hmm. everybody comes together and we. Um, all these minute to win it games that I found online. I, I got all the stuff for it. So now that we have everything, we can have it over and over. And it's a lot of fun. Everybody gets really competitive. You wear an ugly Christmas sweater, the ugliest one that you can possibly find. And then we have hot chocolate and we play a bunch of games for a couple hours and just see who wins. Yeah. So that's a lot of fun. Um now, one of the I have two more questions for you as this year as this uh, hour is flying by. But how can you ensure that you're taking care of yourself and minimizing your stress this holiday season? Um, that's the first of the last questions that I'm going to ask. Well, I would I would start by saying don't try to take on everything yourself. Uh, everybody in the family can pitch in for getting the house ready for company. For example, if you're trimming a tree. Uh, it takes a village. Uh, getting the food and drinks uh, ready uh, certainly uh, can be a team effort. Uh, think back to Thanksgiving time. All I was trusted with was being the bartender, but at least they were able to sp spread the work around a little bit, even in my case. Uh, reserve some time for the things that keep you in shape. We talked about this a little while ago. Go into the gym, or you don't have to belong to a gym. Just take a brisk walk. If you have to bundle up, uh, so be it. Uh, but there's more to do around this time of year, uh, and so what you want to be doing is trying to set aside a particular time that you're going to do these things that, that give you the, the wellness that you need. 
And if you're able to just kind of carve out that time, just as if it was something on your calendar, like this day is the day I go to the gym for an hour and a half, you know, whatever it's going to be, this is the time that I've got my walk in there. Uh, if you just do that, it can certainly increase your chances of avoiding this feeling of being overwhelmed. And then uh, pace yourself. If you work off a list of what you have to get done and what you have to shop for, you can deal with it in a rational way. Avoid that last-minute frenzy. Just methodically uh, work your way down the list. And then, of course, uh, once again, just having that budget advance plan and see that what you're you know, putting into the cart and into the uh, pile of presents is uh, what makes sense uh, for you. Uh, and that can you know, help you uh, just steer away from that, just stress that comes with the frenzy of trying to do everything all at once. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think also identifying those triggers that that um, cause you anxiety and stress and, and staying away from those, because I think that's also when you start to do the emotional spending, the emotional eating, shutting down and not wanting to to go out. So learning from your yourself and your triggers as to what causes your anxiety and stress. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just have to build in stop time too. It's just enough's enough. I need quiet time. Maybe it's a long time. Um, you know, I can be pretty bah humbug sometimes <laughs> during the holidays. And, you know, so it's just like, you? go away. Oh Run. yeah, you I would be amazed. It's how bah humbug <laughs> I can get. Um, but, you know, the Grinch comes out once in a while, but and and then it's time to just go do something totally unrelated. Right? Yeah. Sometimes it's just stop, sit on the couch and vegetate for a while. Just kind of mm -hmm. let it. Mm-hmm. You know. mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. All awesome tips. Now we kind of talked about this earlier, but um, I want to definitely recap it, especially for anybody that's just joined this. Um, what steps can you take to ensure that your 2018 holiday season is not as stressful as it may be this year? Yeah, so this is a great time to start mapping out your budget for next year. Uh, one of the things that we've been uh, doing with the Financial Literacy Commission is giving folks some ideas for, you know, what to think about as they approach the new year. And this is a wonderful time to start if you haven't already. Uh, you can start building in some savings each month now for next year's holidays. And we did talk about that, but that would let you uh, have some peace of mind that the money's going to be there when the time comes. Uh, you might, if you're not going to be in one of those little savings clubs we talked about, another option would be simply a separate savings account uh, for, for that. Uh, many of the banks and credit unions offer those with a $5 minimum balance, and so you can simply just start with basically nothing and uh, have a, a particular place that's just for that. Uh, makes it a li little easy for you. It also gives you a way to see your progress because without a way to kind of measure your progress, it's so easy to take like three steps forward and two steps backward. You know, you have the money sitting there, your checking account's running up, I'm doing well, but oh yeah, uh, why don't I just uh, go out and buy this new thing because I have the money. It's just so easy to do that. But if it's in a separate place, that gives you a wonderful leg up on next year. Uh, like Rod said, it's sure going to come. It's not going to be a surprise that, that it's coming to you again a year from now. Uh, deep sales on seasonal items that you see right after the holiday. The most obvious ones, I guess, are the cards, the gift wrap, decorating items. Uh, but there are some less obvious things. I remember seeing a big cardboard box full of sweaters that were 10 bucks in uh, one of the stores uh, not long after Christmas uh, a year ago. Uh, if you have a place where to keep these things on hand for next year, uh, not everybody has room, but if you do, it's a good way to uh, get ahead and, and save some money and also reduce next year's stress. And then I would say take stock of what worked this year and what didn't. We talked a little while ago about some things that are worthy of being annual traditions and some that are not. And you might have tried like some event, some uh, outing, some get together, some party, and maybe the amount of stress outweighed the amount of joy and, and delight. And if you think about why that was, maybe there's uh, something you should do differently, or maybe it's something that just doesn't have a home in there every year. So just take a step back, uh, you know, when it's all fresh in your mind. What worked this year? What didn't? What makes step uh, sense for next year when it comes around? 
Very, very good tips. Thank you so much, Neil. Rob, do you have anything that you want to add? Um, you know, I just think as as Neil was talking too, you know, if you're in my view, if if you're doing things and it's causing you stress because you're trying to impress somebody else, I don't you shouldn't have to impress your family and friends. I mean, it's kind of they they will love you for who you are and they will like you for who you are and if they don't find some different friends it's kind of my <laughs> you know my theory there but um you know, look at what your priorities are and why you're trying to do something um you know and and then also divide and conquer if you can if you have somebody you work with you know if, if, if we shop and my wife and i shop she gives me a list and she has a list and off we go to try you know it saves us time we know exactly what we're getting um you know, so we can kind of get things done sooner, which helps reduce some of that stress too. And Neil's right, right after the holidays, great time to shop and, and throughout the year on the, sort of the common things. Look for those socks in January instead of, you know, December. Um, you know, and, and, you know, look at the traditions that don't cost anything. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, I do a video and by accident, I did one one year and it became a tradition and it's not, doesn't cost anything but time, um, you know, to do. So, and time's valuable, mm -hmm. and and it comes from the heart. So, you know, those things last longer, much much longer. Yes. Well, thank you, uh, Neil and Rod, for the awesome tips that you've shared today. Neil, can you let everybody know where they can learn more about you? Sure. Well, I have a startup company called Green Meadow Associates. We do training, education, orientation, and you can find me at our website, which is www.greenmeadowllc.com. Uh, you'll also find me on LinkedIn. Awesome. And Rod, do you want to let people know where they can learn more about you? Sure. Here on Credit Chat, Wednesdays, 2 o'clock Central, 3 Eastern, uh, and whatever time it is, noon in <laughs> California. Uh, and on Periscope, on our Credit Chat there, I try to be there Tuesdays and Thursdays this week. Looks like it's not going to happen, but <laughs> I try. So I'm here today. Anyway, I'm in California, and I don't get to be on the, on the scope for the chat. Um, but look for me there uh, and on Twitter at, at Rod underscore Griffin. I'm, I'm occasionally active there. Okay, thank you both so much for the wonderful tips that you shared. If you're just tuning in to this uh, credit chat, Periscope, definitely go back and catch the replay because we shared tips all throughout this last, you know, 48 minutes, 50 minutes about ways to reduce anxiety and stress during the holidays. So definitely go and see those. Thank you so much, Neil and Rod. I appreciate your time. And I hope everybody has a wonderful holiday season. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. Happy holidays. Happy Thanks holidays. Take care. All right.